Good morning and happy Friday. I thought we would do a three day weekend prep video since I just got back from vacation yesterday and I have today off. It's Friday and I have Saturday and Sunday off obviously too. So come along with us as we get everything done. Right now, Connor and I are going to pick up Murphy from the kennel where he stayed while we were gone. So that's one thing I need to get done first thing today or this morning not that much morning anymore it's like 11 a.m but we're gonna get that done and then i'll share with you the rest of the things i have on my list to do we got murphy he tired boy i do a tired boy he always sleeps for like <laughs> two days after we get him home from the kennel and i also made him a grooming appointment on monday so he can go get a bath and get his nails trimmed and his teeth brushed oh buddy okay so i got murphy home i've got my little list here of things i need to do and my grocery list and some checks i need to deposit so we're gonna get that done this afternoon it's about 3 20 in the afternoon right now so i need to pick up the dry cleaning deposit some checks i need to film a mizen video today i'm actually really excited about that I need to pick up mail at the post office go to goodwill i already picked up murphy work on some thank you notes i'm not gonna get my car washed because look raining <laughs> It is raining at this time, but I do need to like vacuum it out and stuff like that. So I might do that on Sunday when it's not raining and I can kind of park it in the driveway and do that. I need to return some shoes I bought for Connor that don't fit. There's a video I need to edit and then I have a note on here for vacation because I think we are going to try to maybe spend some time in Kansas City this summer. So I need to like research some Airbnbs and things like that. But right now I'm at the post office, so I'm going to run in there and pick up our mail that was on hold while we were on vacation. Okay, so let's see what we've done so far. Got my dry cleaning, posited my checks, picked up the mail, went to Goodwill. Shoot, see this is why I already picked up Murphy. See this is why I have to write things down because I totally forgot about returning the shoes. And also like can we just have a three day weekend every single weekend because I truly feel like two days is not enough to like get all the things done that you need to get done and if we could just go back to who was it that made the five day 40 hour work week? Henry Ford? I don't know my history. <laughs> but I think it was during like that era. So if we could just go back, I mean, I would even, if it's gotta be 40 hours, which 40 hours is such an arbitrary number anyway, but if it's gotta be 40 hours, let's do four tens. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then have Thursday, or and have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. I used to do that once. I used to work a compressed schedule. And actually I used to work, when I worked on the floor, I worked 12 hour shifts. So I would work mostly three, three 12 hour shifts a week. And then once every two weeks, you'd have to do an eight hour shift to make up that extra four hours, you know? So I would work, even if you work well, three 12 hour shifts in a row is rough then you almost need like a full day to recuperate. But then after that, you have like a lot of time off, like more than normal people do that work normal schedules. So I don't know. I would like to work for 10 hour shifts. That would be, that would be perfect, I think. It is so cold and rainy out today. It's like, I don't know what, well the temperature says it's 44, but it's gotta be colder than that because I saw snow like a little bit earlier and it's rainy and windy and I'm wet and I got groceries at Aldi and I got a few things at Hy-Vee. So what I'm gonna do now is go home, cook some pizza for dinner cause it's Friday and we have to have pizza on Friday. Obviously my kids will have mutiny, just kidding. <laughs> And then I'm gonna film my grocery haul and then I will get started. Hopefully, hopefully tonight I can prep and wash some of my produce. Good morning, happy Saturday. I did not get any of my produce prepped last night, but I did get my groceries put away. So, you know, that's a win in and of itself. But I just got up a little bit ago, it's around 9 a.m. Slept in a little bit. So I'm gonna make these country fried steaks for breakfast. If you ever find these, I find them at Hy-Vee, but I think Walmart has them too. They're really good and quick. And you don't necessarily have to make them for breakfast, obviously. You can make them for any meal. Adam really likes country fried steaks. So instead of, you know, pounding out the round steak and making it myself, this is this is a lovely compromise. So I've got those on a baking sheet here. And they do come with a gravy packet in there. So I'll make that. And then on the side, I'm going to make some hash browns and some eggs. And I might cut up some fruit and wash that but I also need to do my dishes because that's a mess right now also okay so I've got a little bit of butter some avocado oil in the skillet I'm just gonna add my hash browns I'm not gonna cook the whole bag and then I'm gonna season 
these hash browns with some seasoned salt. I've been liking to do that lately just to ease this up and because it tastes good. I don't know if you guys have a container of seasoned salt in your pantry or in your spice cabinet, but I do. And I hardly ever use it on things unless like a recipe specifically calls for it, but it's really good on hash browns if you want to try that. And I've got my bread steaks here, so I'm going to put these in the oven. 10 minutes and then flip them over. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some blueberries washed up. I am going to end up prepping and washing a ton of produce this weekend just to get it ready for the week. I always find that we eat it more and we waste less food if it's already prepped. Here are the eggs that I'm cooking up. I'm just using the same pan as the hash browns just so I don't dirty an extra pan. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make Adam's plate. So I'm going to add the eggs, which I accidentally broke the yolks, story of my life, <laughs> and some hash browns and the uh, chicken fried steak. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of that gravy over the top. Delicious breakfast. I have said before that Adam's favorite meal is breakfast. So I love cooking it for him because he enjoys it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my produce, my blueberries anyway, into this produce keeper. I really like this one. I can try and link it down below. I believe I got it on Amazon, but I like it because it kind of keeps the berries separate. And then I'm also gonna wash up some of my strawberries. I do like to soak those in some cold vinegar water just to make sure that I get all of the dirt off. And then I rinse them really, really well just to make sure there's no vinegar taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those up into the other side of the container. I get asked questions sometimes if these stay in the fridge okay, like do they get slimy? How long do they last? I really find that when I have fruit cut up like this, my kids will eat it in just a couple days and it's normally not a problem. But in the event that it doesn't get eaten, you know, within two or three days, you can just throw these in the freezer and freeze them and then you can use them at a later date to make smoothies. So like I said, I hardly ever have to do that, but you can do that. And same thing with banana if they get too ripe and you don't want to make you know banana bread or anything like that you can also slice those up and put them in the freezer as well for smoothies and I really like using frozen fruit in my smoothies because I just find that it gives it more flavor and texture and obviously more sweetness than just using ice all right so I'm going on with washing and prepping more of the produce I wanted to get my broccoli cut up and washed too this is something that I pretty much buy every single week because my kids really like broccoli and it's a really easy vegetable that I can like steam up and have on the side of dinner. It does hold pretty well in the fridge. So if you wash it up and drain it really well, you can put it in a Ziploc bag or a container and it will usually stay like I would say five to six days as long as it's not too wet. And then all you have to do is steam it up when it's time for dinner during the week. I'm also going to wash some of my sugar snap peas. I got these at Aldi and a lot of times when I buy these, they are pre-washed, but for some reason, the ones at my Aldi are not which is fine. They're super easy to wash anyway. My kids love these. It's actually one of the green vegetables that Kira will eat. She's gotten better over the years. She has been a little bit pickier before, but she does like the sugar snap peas and she will eat cucumbers too. So I'm going to give these a wash. I really like the mini ones because they are super convenient to cut up. And normally I like to cut them kind of into sticks, almost like you would like pickle spears. I just think that they're funner, to, you know, more, I guess funner isn't a word. They're more fun <laughs> to eat that way and they're easier to dip if you want to dip them in ranch dip or hummus or something like that. Okay so now I'm going to go ahead and get some dishes hand washed. I really wanted to clean out my kitchen today. We had gotten back from vacation obviously and it was just I don't know. I mean my sink was clean when I when I got back but you know as I cook on the weekends I just I feel so much better when I have a clean kitchen and I have a sad story about my Pioneer Woman cake plate or I guess that's what it's called. You guys can see there I have the green bottom of it in the sink. There's a glass dome that goes on top of it and I love it. I always keep it out on my island with like muffins in it or you know whatever I bake and the other day I was actually wiping off my island and I accidentally bumped it with my arm and the glass dome fell off and like it was it was like one of those times when you're like looking in slow motion at something falling on the floor and you're just like no and the 
<laughs> the glass dome fell off of the island onto one of the bar stools and then crashed onto the floor and just like shattered into a million pieces. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So now I'm going to be on the hunt for another cake plate. It was probably meant to happen at some point anyway, because I told you that you guys right now, the bottom of the cake plate, the green part is like held in place with JB Weld because that <laughs> fell apart as well and Adam fixed it for me. So dang it. If you guys have recommendations for a cake plate, let me know. Okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and get my sink cleaned out. I really like using this Molly's Suds cleaner. I think, I believe I got it on Thrive Market with one of my orders. I use a couple different kinds of, you know, cleaner for my sink. Sometimes I use Barkeeper's Friend. Sometimes I use the pink stuff. And then I also have this Molly's sink scrub. I don't know. I just like to switch it up. I would say that this isn't necessarily a super heavy duty cleaner because I think it's basically just baking soda and like essential oils. But I do think it smells really good. It's got like a really nice sort of like citrus and minty scent. So I probably would purchase it again just because I like the smell of it. And I think it does a pretty good job. But if you need a cleaner that's more heavy duty, I would recommend something else. But I think it's uh, nice to have on hand. Okay. And then I'm just going to rinse my sink with super hot water, which is the most satisfying thing in the world. And then I'm going to put some garbage disposal cleaner in there and run the garbage disposal. I have gotten questions before what the purpose of that is for. And I think the purpose is just to clean your garbage disp <laughs> disposal. I use mine quite frequently and so obviously as you use it you know there can be like food particles stuck in there and I know that sometimes they can develop an odor. I have never noticed mine develop an odor but I usually use one of those cleaning packs once or twice a week. Okay so I wanted to share with you guys what I was throwing together for dinner tonight. I kind of just had some odds and ends that I wanted to use up. These are stuffed mushrooms from Aldi. I got them in the produce section. You guys maybe saw that if you watched my last Aldi grocery haul. Adam is really the only one that likes mushrooms, but I made them for him and he really liked them. I'm also going to make up some of these Tyson blackened chicken tenders. These are really good in the air fryer. I kind of have a hard time finding them sometimes, but I really like them with salad and they're super quick for weekday lunches as well. And then along with that, we are going to have some Caesar salad. So Adam's gonna have the stuffed mushrooms. I'm gonna have the Caesar salad and the chicken. Chicken. I can't remember what the kids ate. I fed them something. <laughs> This is a Caesar salad kit from Hy-Vee. I'm just like picking out some of the brown pieces of romaine and then I'm going to mix it together. I really do like this ultimate Caesar salad kit from Dole. It is kind of a little bit pricey so I try to get them when they're on sale but it comes with like extra dried herbs and pepper in there and a Parmesan cheese and croutons and a really great Caesar dressing. So I definitely recommend that if you've never tried it before. It's a great option as a side for dinner or a quick lunch. Okay so here is Adam's plate. He's got some of those blackened chicken tenders with some ranch to dip. They are a little bit spicy. Some of the stuffed mushrooms and some Caesar salad. And like I said, I can't remember what I cooked the kids on this night, but I can assure you they did have dinner. Okay, so I was busy Sunday morning. I'll tell you guys about that at the end of the video, but now we're gonna jump forward to Sunday evening's dinner. Okay, so for dinner, I'm going to make some rice and I'm gonna do it in my instant pot because that's my favorite way. But I need two cups of rice. I'm using jasmine rice. And I'm actually going to rinse this because that way it won't be so sticky. And I'll link the base recipe that I'm using down below. Okay, so in here in my Instant Pot, I've got it on saute. I've got some butter and some oil. I'm going to add my rinsed rice and some dried basil. Okay, so to this, I have added some salt, some garlic powder, some chicken bouillon powder and I'm gonna add two cups of water and some lemon juice. Okay, so we're gonna cook this on high pressure for six minutes. There we go. So this is one of the salmon freezer meals that I made yesterday and I thawed it out today and I'm gonna cook it. So I'm putting this in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. So I've got a pan here with steamer basket and I'm gonna add some broccoli that I washed up and have some of that steamed broccoli. All right, so here is dinner. 
turned out so good. I don't know when you guys are gonna be seeing this video, but hopefully you will watch it or have watched it. That salmon recipe is really, really good. So we have our rice there and our broccoli and boom, that's done. So I got an order from Misfits Market this weekend and I thought I would share a quick haul with you guys because there's some fun stuff in here. So I got some of the Nellie's free range medium eggs. I got two dozen of those. We can always use eggs and we're always <laughs> running out of them. I got some of these mini uh, sweet peppers. These my kids love. I like cutting them up and they take them in their lunch boxes, eat them for snacks, all of that good stuff. I also got a cabbage. I thought it would be good to maybe make some coleslaw this week. I got one cucumber that I'll cut up for salads and snacks, some mint, some rosemary, a Caesar salad kit, always love to have those on hand a green pepper i have a recipe that i'm going to be using this in along with the sweet potatoes it's a slow cooker recipe i got some fresh ginger to have that on hand for a salmon recipe that i'm going to make i got some celery my kids actually like to snack on this and then too when i make tuna salad i like to put a little bit in there i got a pineapple this one doesn't look quite ripe yet but we'll leave it on the counter and hopefully it'll <laughs> ripen up a little bit for us i got some yellow potatoes these i just like to have on hand for for like quick sides for dinner. They're super easy to roast up in the oven along with like some protein and some veggies, some onions. Um, I got some apples, my kids eat apples every single day they love them super easy to just cut those up and they can snack on them, have them for breakfast, lunches, all of the above. I got some boneless skinless chicken breasts, just two of these. I might grill these up and then just have them with salads throughout the meat week, maybe one with that Caesar salad for a lunch. I put this in a bag just because I didn't want it to leak, but this is a package of grass-fed beef tenderloin tips. I thought this would be good maybe to saute up and have with potatoes or in a stir fry or something like that. I just like getting stuff like this because it forces me to like use things that I don't normally have on hand and I end up coming up with some pretty like inventive meals sometimes. I got some of these, be well they're actually pork sticks. Um, there's jalapeno, pineapple, and uncured bacon flavor in there but they're individually wrapped so good for lunches and that kind of thing. Um, I have not tried this yet so I'm not sure if I like it but it's the poppy watermelon probiotic soda and it's pretty low sugar so I thought I would try that. I'm sure probably I'm the only one that'll drink it. I got this for Adam. This is the Moon Cheese brand and it's the Blitz mix. Fun fact, I did a sponsored video with Moon Cheese a long time ago. It was actually super fun. I ended up like taking their Moon Cheese and like crushing it up in a food processor and crusting chicken with it. It was really good. Anyway, I digress. This has the cheese in it along with some pecan halves and it's ranch flavored so that we tried that. I got some of these little secrets crispy mini wafers they're milk chocolate with sea salt i thought those looked like they would be fun to try this tiny little cute bottle of mayo i like keeping a squeezed mayo in the refrigerator just because it's easy to make sandwiches in the morning when i'm running behind i got this cream of cauliflower soup which i thought this was neat i've never seen it before in any of my stores so i thought that would be fun to try maybe in a recipe i got some salmon because I want to make a recipe with this and my kids love it. So one package of just regular salmon and then two packages of this honey barbecue marinated salmon. I thought that looked really good. And then I don't really need bacon because I have a lot on hand, but I do like the Nyman Ranch Applewood smoked bacon and this was on sale and it came with like the ends and the pieces. So I thought this would be good to maybe cook up and put into a breakfast casserole or have with baked potatoes or something, not quite sure yet. I got some of these Bobo's oat bites, some in the pecan pie and some in the chocolate almond brownie. Kira likes these and she'll take them for breakfast on the bus to school. I got this Tasty Bite Organic Ancient Grains. I have some different like curries and sauces and stuff in the pantry that I want to use up and so I thought this would be good to go with that. I got some cold brew coffee. This is the Intelligentsia? Intelligentsia. I can read, I promise. <laughs> these came four in a pack, just cold brew. And I like cold brew, so I thought I would give those a try. I've heard of this brand before, but I've never tried it. It's called Safe and Fair Food Company. This is basically like a kettle popped popcorn that's flavored like pancakes. I thought that would be fun to try. I've gotten this yogurt before and it's really good. It's the Noor Organic. This one is strawberry rhubarb. I like to have yogurt on hand for smoothies, breakfast, different things like that. I got this tzatziki and I will probably have this with some falafel or 
pita or something like that. I saw this little jar of Concord grape jelly and that is Connor's favorite with PB&J so I decided to get that for him. I wanted to try these Stroopwafels. It's been a long time since I've tried one and these are the little, I don't know, are they, do you call them cookies? I don't know what you call them. Anyway, you put them over the top of a cup of coffee. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. And they warm up and the caramel gets a little bit melty. So I thought those would be fun to try. I got a couple of packages of these snack pack things. This one has soprasada, salami, and cheddar. This one has Genoa salami and Fontina cheese. I got some ham. I always like to have that on hand for sandwiches and pickle roll-ups and things like that. I thought this was interesting. This is chorizo and I've never seen chorizo in this form before like sliced and ready to go on a sandwich. I thought that would be fun. So I got that. I got some of this Otto's grain-free cookie mix. It is gluten-free made with cassava flour and it has a recipe on the back here. I think you have to add in your own chocolate chips or you can add in like white chocolate chips. You can make snickerdoodle, whatever you want. So that's pretty fun. And then I also got this lavash. This is really good for wraps and sandwich. Well, not really sandwiches. I guess wraps. Eat it with hummus. Make pizza out of it. I got this naked classic white bread. Thought it looked good. And it's nice, like, thick cut. Connor really likes to have this for toast in the mornings. And then last but not least, I got this farm-to-table organic pasta sauce. Garlic and herb. I've never seen that brand before, so I thought we would try that. It's one thing I like about ordering from, like, Misfits and Hungry Root and things like that. It's just, I can find things there that I don't normally find in the regular grocery store. And I like getting my produce from there because a lot of times, like, they always say it's, like, ugly produce, but, like, these apples look perfect so like I don't see really <laughs> anything wrong with the stuff I get so that's what I got from Misfits this week hello many days later um, I totally forgot actually until like Saturday that I told my stepdad that my sister and I would come over to his house and help him clean out some of my mom's stuff because as you know well or if you don't know she passed away uh, from COVID in November, at the end of November. And so he wanted us to come over and look through some of her stuff to see like what it was, did we want any of it? And then there's like a big file box worth of papers that I told him that I would take home and look through also. So I thought I would show you guys some of the things cause they were, um, they're kind of, there's kind of some cool things. And I don't really have anything else to talk about in the rest of this video because my Sunday was basically consumed with that. I think I was over there from like 8 in the morning until after lunch and then after I got home I was just like exhausted and I didn't really do anything else. So I do have a recipe book that I made with my mad scrapbooking skills. You guys know I used to be a scrapbooker. Uh, this was made in... 2006 so what 16 years ago now so there's some awesome retro scrapbooking skills in here um, but actually some of these recipes I forgot about so <laughs> I think I'm gonna take take them out of there um, this was a, a recipe book that I had made um, for my mom so anyway had that and then she also had some uh, records or do you call them vinyl? I don't know. So I took, I brought these home because Kira has a record player. This one is the Partridge Family. I think I love you. I think I love you. Was that, isn't that how it goes? I don't know. The Partridge Family is like before my time. Um, oh, here's the Partridge Family too. Includes, doesn't somebody want to be wanted? Oh yeah, isn't that David Cassidy? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. This, like I said, that's, this was before my time. Uh, what's this? Oh, a Partridge family Christmas card. <laughs> and this is, oh, the Carpenters. Close to you. So, there you go. Some more records for our, <laughs> for our collection. Also, I don't know where this came from because I don't recall having this as a child. Um, and some of you guys that are younger are probably not going to know what this is, but it's a Viewmaster. So this is like 
what kids had before they had iPads, <laughs> like even before my generation. Um, so there's like all kinds of, there's like a Christmas Carol. Oh, here's one of Yellowstone. There's some Disneyland ones. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff. I told my sister I would take it home and keep it. And if she wants to come over and look at it, she can. Oh, there's Bambi. I don't know. I just thought you guys would get a kick out of some of this stuff. So I thought I would share it with you. Oh, the Apollo moon landing. That's cool. There's some more Disney. Oh, the love bug. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. So I should actually, I should show this to my kids. Yeah. So you put like the, the little round thing in here and then you look through it. If you look up to the light, it looks better. And then you can, you know, pull the lever down. You guys that are my age or older than me probably know what it is but anyway <laughs> i thought that was funny there's there's also this um old box of bibles and stuff like this this stuff is like really really old um i'm sure it came from my grandma my mom's mom but i have a lot of storage in my house and so i thought that i would be um okay to keep some of the the family heirlooms okay so this bible is like a very old it's like wrapped it's wrapped in um cloth and i i don't know i almost feel like this needs to be like preserved or something by a uh professional because i can't let me see if i can find a date on this so i'm not sure of the date but there's like some dates of like 1955 in here which I, that seemed th this bible seems much much older than that there's like pencil markings like okay the early the, i don't know the earliest date i can find on this is 1953 but i feel i feel like doesn't it look much older than 1953 i'm not sure i'll have to ask my grandma she would she would know this is what i was going to show you guys so this is these are actually letters from my great great grandpa to my great great grandma and they are dated June 1921. So these letters are 101 years old this year. Isn't that crazy? Um, my sister and I were trying to read them and even sometimes the cursive is like very hard to read but I just think that's so cool, isn't it? I probably shouldn't honestly be touching them with my fingers because what, you'll get like oil on there or whatever, but isn't that so neat? The stamps then were two cents. Two cents for a stamp <laughs> in 1921. Dear Mabel, I will try and write sooner this time. Got your letter Wednesday noon, but as I was helping one of the neighbors put up hay, I didn't get to read it until I got home that night about 11. At home that night about 11. Some late worker, don't <laughs> some late worker, don't you think? I got through out at Wiggins Wednesday, so I am loafing out at home now. Think maybe I'll go to work next week. I can stand lots of this. <laughs> I can't read it. I can stand lots of this reading, you know? Was in town all day. Yes. Something to the band last night. Listening to the band last night, saw Mr. and Mrs. James out in the park. Pee Wee and Daddy Sullivan were out there too. A bunch of us boys were getting weighed in front of the 10 cent store after the concert was over. I happened to be on the scales when your Aunt Martha came along and hollered out, how much have you lost, Nelson? So you see this worry, <laughs> so you see this worry and lonesomeness must be hard on me or she wouldn't have noticed how thin I'm getting. A big circus is coming to town Saturday the 23rd, the Jefferson County Fair starts the 9th of August. Chattanooga starts about the 19th of August and I don't know when the state fair is, the latter part of August, I guess. So you see, 
there is something going on down here in Fairfield, Iowa. I sure wish you were here. I wouldn't care then whether I went any place so long as I was with you. And if you come back by the first, you will be here in time for the big fair. Have you got many blackberries up there? There are lots of them around here. How's the watermelon coming out on those Grand River bottoms being back? Well, the folks want me to pick some berries, so I had better quit as I want to go to town this afternoon. Your loving friend, Ralph. Aww. And you guys want to see love letters from a hundred years ago? <laughs> Isn't that so sweet? So this is really what kind of like threw me for a loop is I was going through all of these files and I knew there was going to be like probably old like court documents and stuff in there that my mom had saved. Um, like potentially from when my parents got divorced and then when she had gotten divorced again after she was married to my first stepdad. And so I found there are these tax returns in there from, there's one from 1998 and there's one from 1999, which I would have been like 15, 16 years old then. And I just like, I'm looking through them and I don't know, like I, I mentioned this in an Aldi video, um, less Aldi haul I did, but like I always knew that we were poor growing up. Like I knew it was always like money was always a thing. Like there was never enough money. We couldn't do certain things. We couldn't be in certain things at school because we didn't have enough money. Like, I don't know. I still feel like I have certain like trauma over it. I know that like poverty trauma is a thing. Like that's a thing I've talked to about, like talk to my therapist about. And you know, there were times when like, I didn't know if we were going to get winter coats for the, the winter or like, I don't know. It's just, you know, all the stuff that like goes with that. And so I'm just like reading through these like income amounts and it's just like I converted the income for inflation. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I figured out, I figured out the inflation rate and like even in like 1998, 1999, we were living like like significantly below the poverty line, like eight, nine thousand dollars below the poverty line. And I'm, and my mind is just like blown. Like, I don't, I don't know. Part of me is like, now I like understand. And part of me is like angry. And part of me is like, there must have been other money coming from somewhere, from like family or, I mean, I don't know. Cause I'm thinking like, how do you live on that little money? Um, but anyway, Obviously, I have a therapist and I will be processing all of those emotions <laughs> going through that, but I don't know. I just think it's so, you know, interesting and like I, you know, one of the things that I have always been so, I think, impacted by is like I never wanted to like grow up and have that type of, of stress. You know, I, like I never wanted to grow up and, and worry about money in that type of way. Um, and so I think that's what has like pushed me all of these years to, I don't know, be a workaholic. Like, <laughs> I mean, that, that sounds like a negative connotation, but like, that's all I could think of when I was, you know, like putting myself through college. And like, even when I was in college, I worked as a CNA and I still was probably living at around the poverty line for that point in time because I was making like hardly above minimum wage, you know, trying to put myself through nursing school. No one helped me in college. So, you know, I was paying all my bills and all of that stuff. And it's, it's hard. Like it's, I don't know, it was like a hard time in my life, but I always knew that if I worked really hard and got through it, that I would be able to, you know, get my degree and, have a, a stable income and I guess that was always like my goal and why I think I was so um like drawn to Adam because we dated like all throughout college and stuff because he was kind of the same way I mean he had his you know we all screw around in college <laughs> every once in a while but for the most part he was really smart and really driven to you know get through school and get his engineering degree too so I don't know it was just it was a hard time, but um, I don't know. I, I mean, 
I feel like a lot of that like struggle is is behind me now but it was I don't know it's just like it's shocking to find out information honestly do you know what I mean like I think especially like when you're a kid and you something is your reality and you don't really know much of anything else except for like your friends you know that your life is different than your friends and like I think that sometimes the stories that you have in your head about your childhood sometimes I feel like I question whether things were like like am I remembering that correctly and sometimes I'll even like ask my sister because sometimes she'll remember things that I won't and I'll remember things that she won't which is interesting because I think that like a lot of the times that is also a coping mechanism that we have is is like selectively getting rid <laughs> of bad memories and then once we repress the bad memories we also repress good memories so I don't know I thought that was interesting too and then uh, this was really the thing that kind of like screwed with me is that we um when I w when I was a teenager when I was like 15 uh, I was still living with my mom and my stepdad at the time which my stepdad at the time was very um verbally uh emotionally somewhat physically sometimes and I had had like enough of it by the time I was 15 and I knew that I was going to be getting to the age where like I wanted to get a job and a car and like go out with my friends and stuff like that and I knew that it was not gonna end well or work out well and so I had moved in with my dad at that time like kind of against the custody agreement that my mom and dad had my mom and dad originally got divorced when I was eight which by the way I found the original divorce decree in here too which is <laughs> which is interesting um, but I remember having to go and testify in court about not wanting to live with my mom anymore and that was like I don't think they make kids do that anymore like I hope that they don't because I can remember doing that and it being like probably the, the scariest thing I've, <laughs> I've ever done but there <laughs> there's this I'll, I'll read I'll read this to you this is this is from this is from a court document um, in which my sister and I basically had to talk to a lawyer about why we didn't want to live with um, my mom and my stepdad anymore which they have both passed away now um, it says Jennifer now age 16 is a junior in high school she has lived with her dad since su such and such month of 1999 first with the consent of her mother and then in this part of 1999 against the wishes of her mother Jennifer is doing well in school with a 3.5 grade point average she works 20 hours per week at a part-time job she uses her earnings to pay her father back for her car purchased in July she pays for gas pays for car insurance and pays for some of her long-distance phone calls she participates in color guard during the football season and wishes to attend college when she graduates from high school <laughs> I never remember saying that like I know that that was me like yes I was 16 I was working I was paying for my car I was I don't know this is like what I feel this I think this is like what happened like right before my teenage years fell apart um there's stuff in my sister you know stuff about my sister in here about she's a good student she is in band etc um the children appear to be close given the age difference and like to be in each other's company and enjoys their time together all parties agree that Jennifer is a good role model for her sister due to their sibling relationship. Both the mother and father agree that these two sisters should not be separated. The major issue for the children and their father is the participation of their stepfather in the children's lives. As the children have grown older, they appear to have become extremely uncomfortable with the rigid rules set by their stepfather in the household. Their mother has appeared to give all disciplinary issues to the stepfather and has even gone to the point of handing the phone to him when contacted by their father concerning the children the children also complain of loud arguments that occur on almost a daily basis between their mother and their stepfather their stepfather appears to be rigid and controlling concerning the activities of the children 
This includes unreasonably limiting their phone calls, listening to their conversations while on the phone, requiring them to keep their bedroom door open when they're not dressing and when they have friends over, requiring them to sit in the chair for lengthy periods of time for minor infractions, restricting the music they listen to to gospel or religious music, monitoring their listening to the radio, unreasonably requiring them to remove their shoes in the house for risk of punishment, restricting their use of lights in the home and at times using derogatory statements to Jennifer in particular concerning her weight. Yeah, that happened all the time. Um, their mother has acquiesced in these rules and the children complain bitterly about the fact that she does not stand up for them when they have a disagreement with their stepfather. All of this has culminated in Jennifer not being able to tolerate the living situation and resulted in her choice to live with her father. Since then, she appears to have done very well in their home and she is much more comfortable. All parties agree that Jennifer is responsible and does not exhibit behavior that would indicate she needs much more structure in her life than she's presently receiving. And then it goes on to say about how my sister wanted to move in with my dad and um, just, I don't know, basically stuff saying about how my mom didn't want to talk to my dad and so she would use us as a like communication vessel between the two of them anyway so basically what happened is we had to go through all this court stuff and then my dad got custody of us and i don't know we we did okay for a while like everything was fine and then i started being rebellious because I don't know like I just <laughs> I told my sister I feel like I feel like our parents got divorced like they didn't handle it well they like screwed basically got divorced screwed up our lives and then like complained that I was hard to handle anyway I just thought I would share that with you guys I know that I've shared parts of my life before and I don't know I just I'm I'm almost 40 years old now and it's like there are still things that I have to work through and like I don't know I sometimes I feel like Adam doesn't even understand and why should he because he had a very stable home with two parents that loved him and supported him <laughs> throughout his life like I don't know I just I don't, I don't know if I have an ending to this video really I just like wanted to share that because you know even though, you know, we went through all of that and stuff, like, I never felt like my circumstances def defined me. Like, I always felt like I could claw my way out <laughs> out of that mess, you know? Um, and, I, and I feel like I, I did, obviously. Um, you know, I was able to have a loving, stable home for my kids and supporting them unconditionally and, like, I told my sister there's like a part in the divorce decree about how child su support payments were supposed to continue if we were like full time in college. Like no one ever told me that. No one ever, I mean like obviously when I was 16 and my life was still somewhat stable, I was saying that I wanted to go to college. But like past that, I mean even when I was a junior in high school, like no one was helping me like look for colleges, apply to colleges. Like I... I don't like I try to remember I don't even know like I, and I'm not saying everyone has to go to college I'm just saying like that's what I wanted to do and that's what I did end up doing it just took me a lot longer it was a lot harder <laughs> than it than it could have been um all that to say that I know that you know I'm, I'm not I know that you know social media is not the therapy obviously and um, I, I have a therapist and I talk to her about this stuff every other week, which is incredibly helpful. And honestly, one of the things my brain tries to tell me all the time is that like, you don't need therapy. You're fine. You're lucky. You're this, you're that. You're privileged. You don't need therapy. Like my brain tries to tell me that all the time. And I'm just like, stop it brain. Because I know that like, there are things that I need to and deserve to talk about, <laughs> you know? So anyway, but every time I share something, you know, vulnerable and, and whatever um you guys always comment and and tell me that you know you've experienced the same thing and honestly i think that it helps us feel not so alone because i think when we have issues in our family sometimes we can feel like we're the only ones that are dealing with that and that's just not true and there are just things that you know people don't talk about and there's so much i think 
like if you choose to not be in your family's life because of whatever toxic things have happened and you know whatever's happened in the relationship like I think as a culture sometimes we still make people feel guilty about that like well they're your mother or they're your father like you should be you should love them and try to reconcile with them no matter what and it's like I don't know you know you just never know the whole story <laughs> until until you really talk to someone and so I don't know every time I share stuff like this it always um I, I don't know I'm always grateful for it because you guys tell me you know what you have had to endure as children also um and I just I don't know I wish it could have been different I wish my parents could have handled the divorce very differently um I don't know it's just it's fine it gives us more character right so anyway that's all i have for you guys today i hope that you enjoyed this weird ass weekend prep video but um yeah i'll see you in a few days with another video so thanks for listening to me if you made it this far you're the real mvp <laughs> bye